pretty sure it'll be FE7. I'm curious who it'll be except, or I mean, besides Hollywood and Rebecca. I figure we're, I would say we're almost certainly going to get a Hector. And then I'm actually not sure about Lin, only because Lin, we got a Lin so recently. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. Don't say anything in chat. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I saw the thumbnail. It's Hector. The same voice actor as adult Hector. Interesting. He's got a purr face. Oh my god, he's got a new <laughs> special skill too. Out of my way! What a pain. First Hector since Halloween 2019, I think. Ella Wood? It looks like he grants himself a uh, bonus doubler. Yeah, it's a funny. It's funny to keep the voice actor for young Hector. They all have purse skills, because why not? <laughs> I feel like we don't usually get new purse skills on every special hero, but whatever. So who's the D? Oh, Rebecca? Yeah. Infantry, Grey Archer. Effective against beasts. Attack speed finish three! For the first time ever. How am I doing? We got attack speed finish three way sooner than we got attack speed catch three. Yep. It's Mark. Is he called Mark? Hold hands so we don't get separated, okay? It's Mark. Swift is the wind. Is Mark a Oh wait, the, wait. Does Lin speak for him? Your back. He doesn't even have a VA. Okay, that's kind of funny. I, I kind of like that actually. Sabotage yeah. AR three. This is just a Lin. Oh, no, it's Mark. Lin's just there talking for him. I kind of like it. I think it's a good hmm. a good gag to keep Mark literally mute. Stay strong. Well, there we go. We got the three lords of FE7 and also Rebecca and the player character. Would have been funny if you pretended to be Mark's voice for the second half of the skill. When we said to elevate women's voices, this is not what we met. Maybe Lucius is the TT? I missed it. Probably a staff. Oh, yeah, we got an infantry staff for our Tempest Trials. Guessing he'll have some kind of inheritable staff. Pretty cool. Yeah, I don't know. I was kind of, I was thinking it'd be really lame to get another Lin alt so soon after uh, we got her in August or September of last year. But, she, but she's just a backpack this time. Yeah, I don't think anybody was expecting Mark to show up. That's, uh, that was pretty surprising. One of the banners of all time. I'm not gonna lie, my first impression is that I actually like the banner. I probably won't summon on it. Lynn is a part of two duos, that's true. She shares that distinction with uh, Ephraim and Altina. The collection of very popular, relevant characters who are in two duos. You got Ephraim, Lynn, Altina. We got young Hector, he's a armor axe, right? We actually haven't gotten an armor axe Hector since legendary Hector, which was 2018? Like summer 2018. Okay, there's a lot going on here. I suspect that this new special is going to be inheritable. Uh, Valiant War Axe. Like, so it's special trigger. At start of combat, if unit's HP is greater than 25, and flex attack defense minus 6 on foe, and flex special cooldown charge minus 1 on foe, and reduces damage from attacks during combat by 30%. And also, if unit is within 3 spaces of an ally, flex penalty on foe's attack during combat equal 12. Minus foes max special cooldown count. So it's the same effect we got on the arcane bow. Kind of weird to see it appear again here. Because it's not like... I can't tell if it's like a, a really good effect or not. It's probably better on a tank like Hector. Valiant War Axe seems... It seems okay. It's actually... I like how every time we get a perf now that just has like a collection of generic effects. I'm like, oh yeah, that's kind of like an arcane axe, you know? Like, this axe doesn't have anything about it that really sets it apart and makes it special. 
It's got a special trigger, it's got attack defense minus six, guard, damage reduction, attack debuff. Like, they're all good effects, and together they'll be good too. These almost seem like, like these are the bare minimum effects you need now to be good. <laughs> I don't mean that literally, just... That's how it feels sometimes with the way they balance these skills, the, the way they throw out these effects. Armored Beacon boosts special damage by 40% of unit's defense. If foe's range equals 2, and unit or foe special is ready or triggered before or during this combat, reduces damage from foe's next attack by 40%. Interesting. I, I'm actually not sure if it interacts with Hardy Fighter, because it's not triggered by foe's attack. If foe's range equals 2, and unit or foe special is ready or triggered during... Before or during this combat, reduces damage from foes in the next attack by 40%. I think it's... I think what makes it convoluted is the fact that, like, it activates if their special is ready, but it might not activate on their special. It's just their next attack. Wait, no, is it it's their next attack after the special triggers? Next attack, yeah. So no matter what, you get the 40% damage boost it you know, from your defense. And then also, if their range equals 2, then you also get this other effect. His per phase slot, shockingly, has distant counter in it. If foe initiates combat or foe's HP equal, it, uh, is greater than 75, inflicts attack defense minus 8 on foe during combat, and also, when unit deals damage to foe during combat, restores 7 HP to unit. I'm just shocked that his perf skills don't have quick repost in them. That was like a, a constant for all the Hectors for a while. They all had quick repost in some way. He does have Vengeful Fighter 4 though, so he gets it that way. He's inflicting attack minus 18 at least, and then you add in this effect too. Potentially attack minus 30. If, if they don't have a special equipped, right? Oh, if O doesn't have a special, penalty equals 4. Okay, so not quite. But yeah, you can realistically inflict, like, attack minus 24 with Hector. Oh, he's a far- okay, that makes sense. He's a far save unit. He seems strong. <laughs> What's the weapon called if it's not Wolf Beal? Yeah, this this feels like like this would have been an opportunity to add Wolf Beal and Manny Cotty, but I guess they didn't want to do that. Why is he tree there? <laughs> Actually, yeah, usually they're fighting generics, <laughs> so why is the fact that Eitri specifically is here is actually very strange. Ella Wood's here. We got an Ellie Wood last year as a backpack, but besides that, I don't think we've gotten an Ellie Wood alt since, uh... CYL3? No, I'm not even sure. It was either CYL3 or it was, or it was Legendary Ellie Wood. It's been a while. I like how Lind has just gotten all these alts in the meantime, <laughs> while Hector and Elliot would have gotten nothing. Ninian and Lin actually have gotten alts. Fiery War Sword, exercise special trigger. If unit initiates combat or is in two space of an ally, grants blah plus X. During combat, X equals number of bonus effects active on unit, excluding stat bonuses times three, plus five. <laughs> these freaking equations, man. So if he has, like, no follow-up only, then he gets 3 plus 5, he gets plus 8 to all stats. Times 3 is a lot. Like, it's, it's if you pair him with Asker, for example, that's 2 effects. So he gets 6, plus 5 is 11, he just gets plus 11 to all stats. Oh, this one has a cap, <laughs> that's true, Brave Crom didn't have a cap, that's right. Neutralizes effects that guarantee foe follow-up attacks, and effects to prevent units follow-up attacks, and reduces damage from foe's first attack by 40%. I like how, like Brave Hollywood, he got speed-based damage reduction. Like, you had to pass a speed check to get your damage reduction. But now it's just everybody gets flat 40% damage reduction. I guess it is usually just in the first hit, so theoretically it isn't a, a straight upgrade. But yeah, he gets NFU in his weapon, which is kind of weird, because you'd think maybe he'd want to get it from a different source as, like, a status effect. But anyway... He's got Speed Defense Clash 4 for the first time. Inborn Idealism. At start of turn, if a dragon or beast ally is deployed, 
grants attack speed, defense plus 6, bonus doubler, and null panic to unit and ally with the highest attack. So it's exactly like Legendary Hollywood. And yeah, just throw him with Asker. <laughs> if, yeah, that is true. If you do throw him with Asker, you get 4 effects. 4 times 3, yeah. That's it right there. You only need 4 effects to get the max cap. Is this literally the same as Legendary Elderwoods Remixed Perf? I think it is. It's interesting because, like, there have been cases where a unit will come out like Celica and she'll get, like, the old version of the Perf skill before it got refined. Like, Ascended Celica came out and she got, like, the old uh, Legendary Celica Perf skill, right? But now they will, he essentially got the remix version of his skill. Oh, now you can do... You can... Well, first of all, this means that now you don't need just Legendary Hollywood. You can use this Hollywood too. It, it also means you can run, like, two teams in SDS that have this effect. Oh, I guess that's true. Legendary Hollywood has Kanto as well. I forgot about that. So now you can run two Omni Tank teams in Summoner Duel's S with Legendary Eliwood and also this Eliwood. We got Rebecca. I thought this would have been, like, since Rebecca was going to be here anyway, I thought this would be a good opportunity to have more characters that, from FE7 that don't have alts already. And I guess we got that with Rebecca and Lucius, and that was kind of it. So we got a Demote with a Perf Bow. That's pretty cool. Gusty War Bow. Exploit special trigger, every perf has this now. <sighs> it's not even worth mentioning anymore. <laughs> they beat me down over these past couple banners. I'm pretty sure there, there was maybe like one perf weapon outside of Lucia and outside of Dancers that didn't have Exploit special trigger. But yeah, the last one I remember is Ninja Cherche. I'm pretty sure beside, besides her, it's just been... Dancer perfs and Lucia that have not had extra special trigger. Also like demotes. Demotes and GHPs. I think Young Raven would have been good for this banner too, yeah. She gets effective against Beast Foe, so that's cool. I start a turn. If unit is within three spaces of an ally, unit special cooldown count is at its max value. Grant special cooldown count minus one. If unit is within three spaces of an ally, grants blah plus five to unit and reduces damage from foe's first attack by X percent during combat. If in combat against a beast foe, or a cavalry, or a flying foe with range equals 2, X equals 60, otherwise X equals 30. And also, if unit special is ready or unit special triggered before or during this combat, it deals plus 7 damage during combat. So that's not per special, that's just per hit. Except when dealing damage with area effect specials, okay. So yeah, she's supposed to spam specials, I guess. Makes sense. Well, I mean, yeah, her, her max cooldown is going to be 1. So, as long as she starts the turn within 3 spaces of an ally, she's always going to have a Moonbow ready. Yeah, you could also do Temp's Pulse, and she can run Luna. You can also pair her with Asker, and you can run, like, Astra. <laughs> if you want to take it really far. Give her, like, special Spiral 4. She seems pretty good for a, a demo bow. Definitely not a unit where you would just want to replace it with the arcane bow. This actually is probably better and more unique. Rebecca got treated pretty well, despite nobody using her in FE7. We got Mark. Uh, Mark is an infantry blue tome. We can see his stats here, maybe. 58 attack, 27 speed. 20 defense, and a million res. He reminds me of Young Soren's stat line. So he probably has like... 44 attack, 44 attack, 46 res. A <laughs> total war tome. It shockingly leaks high special trigger. At start of turn, inflex blob minus 5. Sabotage? What is sabotage? Okay. <laughs> At start of turn, inflex blob minus 5. Sabotage, and stall on close foes within five spaces of unit, and foes within two spaces of those foes through their next actions. Okay, I start of combat. 
If your initial HP is greater than 25 and flex blob minus 5 on foe during combat, and unit makes a guaranteed follow up attack, and also if a start, if a stat penalty is active on any foe within two spaces of target, neutralizes effects that inflict special cooldown charge minus X on unit during combat. Okay. I'm wondering, like, if he gets the stat buffs, like, oh, okay, sabotage. Sabotage inflicts penalty on units blocked during combat equals highest penalty on each stat between unit and allies within two spaces of unit. Oh, shit. Okay, so it's it's reminiscent of, like, Yune's perf weapon. I wonder if they realized that unity effects were pretty strong because they just undo penalties, essentially. And they were like, okay, we need a way to counteract this. So, we have Penalty Doubler already, which is a buff that you can give to your units, but now we have Sabotage, which is functionally the same thing, but you're inflicting it on your foes instead. So now when Legendary Robin comes at you and he's all unity buffed up, you can actually use the penalties he has on him to give him more penalties and undo the unity effects. I like it because it it, it gives you a counterplay to unity effects. I guess unity effects were, were already kind of a counterplay to, to penalties, but now you can counterplay the counterplay. With all that in mind, I'm wondering what Sabotage AR3 is supposed to be. Because he's already inflicting debuffs and Sabotage, so what, what does that leave for Sabotage AR3? At start of turn, if any foe's res less than units res and that foe is adjacent to another foe, inflicts attack res 6 on that foe through its next action. At start of combat, if units res is greater than foe's res, inflicts attack res minus X on foe during combat. X equals 3 plus highest penalty on each stat between target and foes within two spaces of target. So once again, reminiscent of... of, uh... of Yune. Wow. I mean, you can stack that with the sabotage status effect. So you can... As long as they're debuffed, you can inflict huge debuffs on them. I think, maybe, call me crazy, that Bond 4 stonks are going up. <laughs> effects that neutralize penalties completely. I think, uh, I think those effects could be becoming more powerful. Because Unity effects, like, they used to be basically objectively better, because you could take advantage of debuffs to make yourself stronger. But now there are effects like this that punish you for having penalties at all. So just being able to negate the penalties entirely, I think, could actually become stronger. If we get more effects like this, I don't think Mark on his own is going to be crazy. Although I guess you can inherit Sabotage AR3 to anybody. Yeah, I wonder if Brave Micaiah would be a good candidate for this. I think she would be. So that's interesting. I've always liked Yune's Whispers, just because it is sabotage, attack, and speed. Like, I've, I've always found it pretty useful. I've never felt the need to replace it. Also, it was a perf B slot, so it scored well, so there was no real need to replace it. I've heard other people rag on it, because it's... I don't know. Because it's just not that crazy. But now that we're getting these sabotage skills, they're pretty much just better. Yeah. Sabotage AS3 would just be better than Yune's Whispers, sadly. More so. Oh yeah, Brave Mikai also has Attack Res Bond 4. Attack Res... <laughs> I have like two extra copies of Brave Mikai, so I guess I could give Attack Res Bond 4 to some people. He also has Canto Control. So yeah, Mark seems pretty good. <laughs> Inflicting big debuffs, assuming you can't neutralize them. Brave Hector just ignores all this. Like, he doesn't care about any of this, which is which is funny. Let's see the duo button. <laughs> Inflicts isolation. Guard. And special cooldown count plus two on foes within three rows or three columns. Okay, so isolation, that's the one that makes it, makes it so that you can't get danced. Guard and special cooldown count plus two three debuffs that are individually pretty good get danced or dance right yeah he's gonna be really annoying 
in summoner duels, <laughs> assuming you can't uh, neutralize his penalty somehow, or just avoid them completely, which is going to be hard, because he inflicts them within five spaces. Yeah, that, it would also prevent you from doing Harsh Command Plus, that's true. That might be why they did it, actually, to prevent you from, of all things, to prevent you from doing Harsh Command Plus, or to prevent you from dancing, which would allow you to, like, uh, cleanse the debuffs, because you can end your action, then dance. But that would only work in summoner duels. Interesting. Mark is a pretty cool unit. I don't think I'll be... I... I don't think I'll be spending orbs for him, although I will say Sabotage AR3 is pretty cool. I don't think I can justify spending orbs for it, though. Lucius is a pretty good choice. He's he's fairly popular, I would say. I think what people are gonna be are gonna be mad about maybe is getting him without Raven. People really like the Raven Lucius situation. <laughs> Let's quickly check out the Reddit salt thread before we go to bed. Yeah, so our guesses are what you said about Raven not being here. And another Lin alt, yeah. Those are my, my, my two leading guesses for what people are mad about. No Raven and Lin. <laughs> the Mad Lives managed to find a way to give Lin another alt where she does all the talking even though she's the backpack. I did forget about that that wrinkle in it, the fact that Mark doesn't talk, so it's just Lin talking. But I think it's funny. I'm okay with it. Mark doesn't even have a voice actor. Yeah, their duo conversation is, is just gonna be like... It's just gonna be Lin talking to herself. Splashing a bazillion penalties on enemies within two spaces of an enemy within five spaces is just so stupid. Really not a fan of that. I'm telling you, the penalty neutralization meta? It starts here. Lin alt in disguise, less about the characters and more on the voice actors. I never, like personally, I never just take note of the, uh, the voice actors. You know what's really funny? Speaking of Lin alt in disguise, I swear to God, when I saw the thumbnail, I was like, yo, that's Lin and Bramimond. <laughs> that's what I thought. Because <laughs> the, the hood looks like Bramimond's hood. I was like, yo, that's a crazy duo. <laughs> the fact that Mark doesn't talk and Lin has every voice line means this is functionally just another Lin duo. I mean, you could choose to look at it that way. I think the problem is like Mark is like, like by design, he's like a non-character. So like the only way to accurately represent him is to just not have him talk. So it, yeah. Like, I don't think Mark can ever be in the game on his own, because he just won't have voice lines. So, I, I think someone said earlier, I wonder when we're getting Mark on his own. I don't think we ever can. So much left on, the left on the table. No Raven, even though Lucius is here. No Ninian or Nils. I'm kind of happy about the no Ninian. We got two Ninians in the past year. I'm okay with no Ninian. Legendary Elia would accept I can use him any season. Yeah. Like, as far as gameplay goes, this is going to be the biggest effect to me, is just seeing more Ellie Wood spam in Summoner Duels. Like I said, I don't see myself pulling on this. If I do, it will be for Mark. Because, one, I want Sabotage AR3 specifically, but also just his ability to punish you for having penalties, even if you have Unity. That is, that is appealing to me. Yeah, oh, I could give one of them Bakaya's Remote Mirror and also Sabotage AR3. Hmm. For now, I'm going to say that I'm abstaining, though. Next reaction will probably be in two weeks, although it depends on what the schedule says. We'll get the next schedule in about a week.